Good evening. Nice to see all of you here. This is a bit emotional, uh, not only because we're going to uh, recognize the Last Supper with Jesus and his disciples, but because this is our first time um, to be together. You have no idea how much joy it brings to me that you are here tonight. So thank you for coming. I just want to remind you that on Easter, we will again uh, fill this sanctuary um, as a face-to-face -face at 10 o'clock. Um, at 8.30, can you hear me okay, Shirley? Okay, okay. Everybody can hear me okay? And at 8.30 is a parking lot service, a worship service, so you have a ch your choice on Easter. Also tonight, I wa also want to welcome those who are viewing us on their screens, on their computers. Uh, they are here with us, and I really want to thank uh, Jim Fisher for being our techie person today, and of course, for Daniel, who is our musician. I also want to remind you that it is communion today, so those of you who are watching this on your computer, uh, please make sure that you have your um, juice and your bread with you as we end the service with the Last Supper. Also, I remind all of you there are Easter baskets in the back and there are three offerings that we are in the midst of taking. For Easter, it is the one great hour of sharing and we have been for about a month now doing a love offering for the college students. Um, so if you would like to give to that, that would be wonderful. And of course, always, um, we have the baskets in the back for offering uh, for the ministry here and in the surrounding area. I believe that those are all, all of the announcements for tonight. So let us responsibly do the call to worship. We gather this night around the table we gather to worship and serve the Lord. As we come to the prayer of confession, let us realize that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So let us come together to pray the prayer of confession corporately together. O oh Christ, you washed the feet of your disciples and shared a meal with people who would betray you. As we prepare to share a meal with you, we ask for forgiveness, O oh Lord, for the ways we have betrayed you. We too have denied your presence. We too have let fear stand in the way of faith we too have been selfish and greedy. We too are in need of your grace. Forgive us, O Lord, and empower us to follow your lead in serving others. And now let us silently confess our own personal sins before God. Amen. Amen. Almighty God has promised forgiveness of sins through his son, Jesus Christ. So believe the promise. God loves you and forgives you all of your sins. Thank Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. As the reading of John 13 commences, you will become... Simon Peter in the reading, speaking his part in bold print. So listen closely to the events of Jesus's last night with his disciples. When you hear Peter's name, your part comes quickly. Please read it as if you were present actually at the Last Supper. We will also respond to each section of the reading with a sung response. So I read. John 13, 
verses 1 through 38. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it, it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. He had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. 
So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but it is to fulfill the scripture. The one who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I tell you this now before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe that I am he. Very truly, I tell you, whoever receives one whom I send receives me. And whoever receives me, receives him who sent me. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom it was he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, probably John, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while in reclining next to Jesus, the other disciple, probably John, not Peter, asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered him. Jesus said to him, do quickly what you are going to do. Now no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, buy what you need for the festival, or that you should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, Judas immediately went out, and it was night. When Judas had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment 
that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow me afterward. Peter said to him, Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. times have we heard it said, especially this last year, that was the last time I saw them. That was the last time I hugged them. That was the last time I was with them before they died, alone, because of the pandemic. 
I have heard so many times, not only this past year in the pandemic, but also throughout my ministry, that was the last time you fill in the blank. So many of us get into the emotions and the sense of loss, the grief, the fear that the disciples had at the Last Supper, their last night with Jesus around the table in community. All of them were there. Their Last Supper, the disciples knew it was their last. Jesus had forewarned them. Everything they feared was coming to fruition. The betrayal of Judas, the plot of the Pharisees to arrest Jesus, the intent of the crowd to crucify him as a criminal. And with the words, That was the last time, fill in the blank. There are always come the questions for the disciples and for us in our own relationships. Did I do enough when he or she was still alive? Did I learn all I could from that person? Did I love them in the best possible way? Did I say things that I now regret? Will I be able to go on without them? And many times our answers are, no, I didn't do enough. I didn't take the time to learn from that person. I didn't always love them fully. And yes, I said things that I now regret. And will I be able to go on without them? No. It will never be the same. But as the resurrection of Jesus unfolds and death is conquered forever, By the power of God in Jesus Christ, the disciples and we are able to say, yes, I can go on. With the assurance of God's presence and God's promise of life eternal, living with God here and now and into the future, beyond the death of a loved one or beyond our own death. Those promises of God become real because Jesus Christ in those last days fulfills those promises. At the Last Supper, the disciples have a sense of descending gloom. Friday, crucifixion would come, and Saturday, Waiting in fear would occur. And Sunday, he is risen, shall be shouted. Nothing would be the same. Everything would be different. But Jesus would be in the midst of it all, sustaining the disciples with God's presence, assuring the disciples of God's power, and supporting the disciples with God's provision. Nothing would be the same. Everything would change in their lives and in our lives. With faith and trust in Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, God sustains us, assures us, and supports us in our last days and in the last days of those whom we love. 
let us give thanks to God for Jesus Christ, for that last supper, his body and his blood given for us in symbols of the bread and the cup. Thanks be to God. The Apostle Paul speaks to the church. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. As we heard the reading from 1 Corinthians 11, let us now come to the table. You are invited to come to this table. Those who trust and believe in Jesus Christ. Jesus is the host and the guest at the table. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. O Lord God, creator of the universe, you who are over everything, we give you thanks for this world, for what you have created. We give you thanks for each person that touches our lives. And Lord God, we give you thanks for your son, Jesus Christ, for the many days that he lived those three years and taught and healed. Lord God, we give you thanks for his death on a cross, that we would know your forgiveness and know the love that you have for us. We give you thanks that he rose from the dead and has promised us eternal life, living with you now and forever. And Lord God, we give you thanks for your Holy Spirit that moves within us, moves among us, teaching us and leading us to be faithful. And so, with that thanksgiving, we lift our voices in joyful praise with the choirs of angels who forever sing to the glory of your name. Let us join together in the Lord's in the Lord's prayer. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
invite you to open up your little containers, remove your masks, and hear the words of Jesus. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Let us take the bread. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Abide in me and I in you, and you will bear much fruit. Let us take the cup. These are the gifts of God for the children of God. Let us praise God together for his gifts of grace. Now go forth into the world. May the sustaining power of God the Father and the assuring presence of Jesus Christ the Son and the support of encouragement and learning from the Holy Spirit be with you and abide with you this evening, tonight, and all the way into the future. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. <laughs>